and good evening. We welcome you today to this exceptionally special episode. It's Women's Day, International Women's Day 2022. So today we bring for you nine ladies, exceptional ladies who have some amazing stories. They are the ones that have pursued their passion. They are the ones that have dedicatedly made and created their niche so I'm not going to speak too much about them because I'm as excited to bring them up on stage as probably you are to watch them and hear their stories. But before we begin, of course, I would love to talk about our collaborators for today's show, the Nehru Center London. We are very excited to have them with us. So let me share a little bit about Nehru Center London with you. Namaste, my name is Amish Tripathi and I am the director of the Nehru Centre London. Now, some may think of Nehru Centre as just this beautiful fine building and it is a fine building no doubt. We have a wonderful art gallery out here, we have an awesome auditorium on the first floor with a capacity of 100 to 120 people right here in the heart of central London in Mayfair. But the Nehru Centre is a lot more than this fine building. The Nehru Centre is also an online platform. We are available on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram and on YouTube. And so the Nehru Centre is actually wherever you want it to be. Of course we'd love for you to come uh, to the physical events uh, that we organise out here uh, when we do organise them. But to join all our online platforms as well, this is a hybrid world, we are going to have offline physical events and online events uh, as well. So do join our online platforms uh, and do keep giving us feedback of uh, uh, what you think of it. We'd love to host you out there. We'd love to hear what you think of our events and do keep sending in your suggestions as well. We do keep uh, imbibing and uh, learning from the feedback that you give to us to give you programs that you guys might enjoy. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Namaste. Jai Hind. So that was the director Nehru Center, Amish Tripathi, pre-recorded. And now we are delighted to have him with us on stage, Amish Tripathi. Hi, Rani. Namaskar, uh, good evening. And thank you for joining us live and making this even more special. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nani ji. In fact, I should speak as little as possible. What an honor it is to have uh, such... Uh, such great women achievers on the Nehru Center platform. As one of our uh, ancient scriptures says, uh, the gods abandon the land where women are not respected. And we certainly don't want the gods to abandon the Nehru Center. So it is it is an honor and a delight for us to host uh, such super achievers on our platform. I'm not going to say anything more. I'm just going to be a watcher now. Lovely. Thank you so much. And so am I super excited to sit back and hear all the stories. So let's do this together as the hosts for today. So Amish, should we move backstage and bring on our first guest for today? Yes, please. Lovely. So our first guest for today is none other than Padmashri Shobhna Narayan. Namaskar. Good evening, Shobhna Didi. Good evening, Nani. How wonderful to be on this platform with you. And it's so wonderful to be there with all these lovely women around and with one Krishna with us. With, with us called Let's Anish bring him on the stage party. just for that. <laughs> You're bringing Krishna up on stage just because you called oh. him Krishna. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we gave you a very Krishna around. <laughs> yeah. 
I I I feel no, no I, I will not say what I feel like, but I feel afraid of being the only male in, in this <laughs> overwhelming uh, uh, and super achieving uh, you know women uh, uh, panel. So yeah, so I I'm going to keep quiet and listen. <laughs> We promise you, it's very gentle, very kind, very generous panel. <laughs> so so let's let's get started with Shobhna Didi then yes. So Didi, I'm not good. Nobody, you don't require an introduction, and I'm not going to give anything more. I'm not going to say anything more. But we want you to tell us about your journey, your life, how like you've juggled between the civil services and uh, you know taking on Kathak in such a serious way. And uh, so tell us about yourself, about your journey. You know, how that's one of the most difficult things to do to tell about yourself oneself. You know, uh, I can only just. you know in a few words just say that i've lived my life the way i want to and i did it because i believed in it and i did it with passion with integrity and dedication honesty and uh, also uh, i keeping all uh, the ethics and values intact but in a way if i look back and i think i think i was always moving against the tide uh when i say against the tide meaning the tide of what society wanted hmm. or what was the dumb thing in society so uh, first of all to uh, declare even at a very young age that i want to be a classical dancer was a strict no no for a girl from a good family but which i did take to uh, studies then you know pursue to take to physics and dance and yet be a, a, a recognized young dance of those days 60s and 70s and uh, then um, and then have two parallel careers which was again a strict no no and yet one did it because i believed in it that was it i wanted to do it i mean nobody forced me or anything but just because i wanted to and uh, then you had to uh, you know sort of make your mark in both and uh, and also then the way i i um, also you know when my father's um, uh, 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 he died in a train accident i gave the agni way back in the 70s and uh, and two days later went and danced at the mathura festival the way i conducted I had my long distance marriage which was uh, now we are on 4th of may will be 40 years and uh, and uh, long distance motherhood also in a way but and uh, then uh, so i think i was just swimming against the tide then also with my uh, medical problems with mm. my skin uh, discoloration and you know and the taunts of people and the catty comments etc and plus also the knees packing up and i've been declared by doctors through and through including a couple of months ago that i am a bedridden person and yet you see me on stage performing and so i have been a bedridden person for the last 20 years so it's okay the, the 20 the bedridden person is the walking <laughs> dancing <laughs> so so things like that so as i said i've just been moving against the tide and not because anybody has asked me to but just because i believe in it and for me i love what i've loved passionately what i've done and what i'm doing and i love being a woman and let me also say above that above all yeah above all i love being a woman i like my femininity i like and um, and if i had to and uh, i have only one um prayer to the lord that please let me die dancing you know that's all let me serve you till my last dying breath and if i had to be be born again and if i was asked what uh, what would you like to be born as i would say again a woman and a dancer lovely that's <laughs> beautiful that's so well said didi and tell us tell us a little bit about uh, you wrote this beautiful book uh, meandering pastures of uh, memoirs so tell us a little bit about that book right it's a it's a biography in a way it is it is about uh, penning down certain experiences because at that time macmillan was after me to mm-hmm. pick 
in down some experiences so i did and um and um, uh, that was it so i just I went down <laughs> and you also spoke beautifully and you also took Kathak onto the international stage and how you collaborated with flamenco and with, uh, you know, like the other dance forms. I mean, that itself. Uh, yeah, in fact, in fact, those days when I did it, I mean, again, as I said, it was a strict no-no. Hmm. When I also wore black on stage for a performance way back in the uh, early 80s, right, strict right. no-no. And when I also used the back my back as the opening sequence for a uh, some uh, item a stage show Spit, yeah no, that's a no no yeah no yeah. no not in those days uh, i'm talking about the 70s and 80s then but that wasn't me the the, the thing um, but like i today what you know as sufi uh, was actually done in 1942 by my first guru sadhana post wow. Uh, wow. she had uh, performed to rumi and um, uh, Omar Khayyam and I was asked to re, uh, redo it and uh, you know on her script uh, mm -hmm. at her memorial function when she died in 73. So and that was my first introduction to what we know today as the world of Sufi. But mm -hmm. you know and since then I've been you know Rumi has been like my next my dear heartthrob you know sort of Vishnu as if anybody's a a Persian knowing person will murder me for the pronunciation, but doesn't matter. It's the so heart Didi, which matters. It's the feeling which matters. True. So, Didi, before we bring on the next our next guest for today, but I definitely want you to end your little piece right now before we get you back on the stage at the end. Is um, so? Can you like with bhav or with mudra? Because that's what you are. Like you know, like it's a complete expression, and. Uh, Maybe just like a little bit of an ang that you can show us uh, with your hands. You can speak about what does Shobhna Narayan mean to you? Oh, what? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what I she means had, to me. I, I don't know I what she I means to, to me. No, I no, no. Let me take it in there. a different way, darling. Let me take it in a different way. Suppose. Okay. Huh. Uh, here, Nani will. Um, uh, Nani is probably looking at me I am. and saying, yeah. And then she's so fed up of me. And so she says, Kahe ko mere ghar I've come to your house, na? the stream yard house. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Kahe ko mere ghar Now, suppose if she is to say, she said, Kahe ko mere ghar Or, Kahe ko mere ghar Or, Kahe ko <gasps> mere ghar Or, Kahe ko mere ghar aaye ho. Or Kahe ko mere ghar aaye ho. Or Kahe ko mere ghar aaye ho. Oh my god. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. This was really, really amazing. This is Thank amazing, you. absolutely. Thank you so Thank much, Didi. Thank you Thank so you. much for being with us today. But please don't. And you know, act, actually, in the world of Kathak, we even rhythm speaks. If you have to say uh, the sound of thunder or lightning, it says, and the jhula. this is beautiful absolutely beautiful and guess what you know who our next guest up today is she is none other than probably one of the pioneers of women playing tabla. She's a composer. I mean, above all, she's a phenomenal, phenomenal person, a super, super artist. And uh, well, who doesn't know Anuradha Pal? So I'll bring her up, Didi, and I'm going to move you backstage because we all want to hear Anuradha as well. Absolutely. So, Anuradha, no, I'm no. bringing you up. Thank you so much for being with us. And uh, I'm bringing you up because Didi was 
saying the parhans and i wanted you to be a part of that and before the lagna hetta de tanan sadha da didi and i did it lagna hetta de tanan sadha da kit de 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 tanan na kit tagna na ga na ga ta डांसिंग रेन विच आर रिलीज ऑन दी ओकेजन ऑफ आजादी का अमृत महोत्सव एंड लास्ट इयर ऑगस्ट एंड दैट्स वेन दीदी डांस इन दैट एंड दर वॉज अ ब्यूटिफुल दल बादल परन Uh, which denotes the way the badal uh, jis tarah se garajte hain aur ye din uska itna sundar usko dikhaya hai ke i i would request all of you to go online and see dancing rain and see didi because she has started the entire program uh, the in my in my uh, video and uh, oh, this is the composition didi that we did remember nagana dhat dhat tanan dha dha kit dhat 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 tanan na kit tagata kagata शोभना दीदी बैक स्टेज एंड अनुराधा लेट्स हियर यू सो चेल लिटल बिट अबाउट Uh, because like you not only trained in the tabla but the pakha work and you i mean you're a multi percussionist and it's been absolutely phenomenal i've been reading up so much about you and there's so much about you i'm sure everybody knows but i want to mm-hmm. hear it from you i want you to tell us uh, you know about first of all you chose tabla which again was a path breaking uh, situation because it's a very male dominated instrument and how mm-hmm. then you stood up against all odds and you created a niche for yourself look at the impact that you've made and there's so many women who come on after you and they've uh, taken it on as well so tell us a little bit about yourself about your journey how you got into it okay so when well, the journey is a lo- is it will take a long time to talk about because there are several things i did but i'll keep it as brief as possible because there are wonderful women over here and shobhana di has set the stage on fire already as uh, was expected uh, so um so it's you know i started uh, learning classical vocal and tabla um tabla more as an adjunct because uh when i was singing i sort of could tell what rhythm cycle it should be and how the tal should go and there was probably an in, inner flair for it and so i uh, requested the teacher to teach me who was actually coming to teach my brother and he refused said ye ladkiyo ka kaam nahi hai main nahi sikhaunga uh so i persisted i learned on my own somehow and then after a, a couple of months when he finally saw heard me he said okay he i teach you so that's how i started learning tabla along with vocal as an adjunct i mean uh, together and uh, i was 9 years old when i started performing on doordarshan and uh, also small concerts here and there and radio and all that and then when i was 13 i started uh, and of course when i was 11 i started learning from ustad alara khan zakir husain which was a great um, uh, blessing because i to get trained from masters like them and to go through the fire uh, and for that i literally had to surrender and submit and completely dedicate myself uh, to you know and and of course i faced a lot of rejection a lot of discrimination a lot of nepotism because i didn't come from a musician family so here was this mongrel literally i was treated like a mongrel uh, no pedigree no family to boast of uh uh and uh, coming from a you know a female in a male dominated field so people would literally say tum ho kaun cheez kahan se aayi ho kyu aayi ho uh why are you in our in our field and stepping on our toes so there were um, uh, several times when people tried to pull me down or spread misinformation or if they called me for a concert they would put down the volume or uh, uh, or you know just not let my name out in the publicity or do funny things but there were other musicians uh, who were very secure and strong and great musicians who actually promoted me a lot and uh, you know uh, like the top musicians who i played with like girja devi like maharaj ji like uh, you know 
just Raji, Hariji, Shivji, all these great artists who I played with, who uh, helped me to actually uh, get that confidence and play on my own. But I, moreover, I needed to, I, I kept sort of working on my art, which is very important because that's when I would do those chilla, uh, which was those 10 hour regime every day uh, to train myself. So it was very important for me to become strong in my work so I could play with different people as well as have develop a repertoire uh, uh, of different, uh, you know, the six gharanas of tabla. Uh, I wanted that there should not be anything lacking in my presentation or in my skills. So, but uh, of course I came from a musician, uh, you know, highly academically oriented family. So making sure that I balanced academics along with music was extremely necessary for me. Like Shona Didi said that she did it for herself. That's exactly the way it was for me. I was so passionately into my academics. I enjoyed science. I, I actually did my 12th in you know my ICSC and then I joined science and uh, uh, that whole journey of actually making a balance between many diverse things. I was interested in sports, reading, um, music, continuously that's everything. Fantastic. That's, so, that's so juggling and wearing, yeah, you know, wearing so many, many hats aspects. like that. Yeah, yeah true. it actually but I enjoyed it. But I enjoyed the fact became... that I didn't have a minute. But then you I didn't have a minute to passionate. socialize. I didn't have a minute. I didn't have a minute to socialize. I didn't have a time to, you know, uh, you know, like just go out chill or uh, go out for friends or whatever. I didn't have time for that because I was very passionate about everything that I did and very much committed to my music. So, but and, that is what uh, shows through your playing, uh, Anuradha. That comes through your playing and that comes through your talent. That uh, you know how you've taken the tabla to the next level, and not just the tabla. I mean, your own jugal bandi is so fantastic, and so many other things that you are doing. So, it's absolutely brilliant. And you know your journey, what you've just spoke. I know it's very difficult to uh, capture such a fantastic journey in just like three minutes. It's very, very tough. But I know this is like, I mean, uh, the end result, the kind of impact that you've created which is so significant. And that's exactly the message we want to leave behind. And I know that you have to rush off for an award ceremony, but I really hope that we are able to catch you back on the stage at the end. And uh, of course, and otherwise, when we have this very special video of yours, which we're going to play at that time, just in case we miss you at that time. So thank you so sure. much. And I also want to mention for the benefit of people here, because it's Women's Day, I want to mention two initiatives that I did, especially for women, which I believe is significant because one i created the sri shakti band which actually was the is the first all female or all girl hindustani karnatic right. band which yes, which fused and which actually gave opportunity and continues to give opportunity to other girls and encourage them and secondly i also instituted an award uh, 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 called the padma shri mtvs award named after my grandfather uh, who was a great educationist and where it was more about encouraging girls towards music, dance, and social service. So my whole yeah. idea has been to make it inclusive and whether it's environment or sustainable development or, or cancer or music or dance, how can we actually bring different skill sets together and promote girls to think for the country, because I also yeah, believe some exactly. my heart beats for the country, and that's when I also released the Bharat Vandan video, uh, uh, which which celebrates incredible India. No, it's fantastic, Anuradha. You've been doing amazing work, and seriously, more power Thank to you. So. And uh, may you always do like loads and loads, and keep sharing a lot of music with all of us. So thank you so much for being here with us today. And, thank you, uh, Naniji, and thank you to all the wonderful panelists and Amish Tripathi, sir, and Shona Didi. You are a big inspiration, Didi, and uh, thank you for all the, the invitation, Naniji. Thank you for all I the... Congratulations uh, for the award that you're going to receive. And I'm now going to take you off and I bring our next guest is uh, Dr. Radhika Chopra. Uh, so thank, thank you, you so, so, so much, Anuradha. Thank you. So up next, uh, so Dr. Radhika Chopra's video is not on. So let's go. Oh, there she is. So that's 
Radhika ji, you're uh, you're on mute. Yes. Can you yeah. hear me now? Yes, I can. So good evening, and thank you so much for being with us here today. So thank Radhika you, Chopra, Namaskar, I'm and love. Yes, and for everybody, I think everybody knows Radhika Chopra. But for those who are still wondering why I'm not giving detailed profiles for anyone, I was I've written down a whole sheet. But I don't think anybody needs introduction. What they're speaking today speaks for themselves, and that's exactly why we are here today. You can get a lot of data on them on the net. In any case, so Radhika Chopra, as we call her, the Gazal Queen. She's my, one of my most favorite Gazal singers. So over to you, Radhika Ji, to tell us a little bit about your journey and you know how you started and how look 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 at the niche that you've made for yourself. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. आपने मुझे याद किया और इस काबिल समझा आई एम एक्सट्रीमली एक्सट्रीमली ग्रेटफुल ऑनर्ड एंड प्रिवलेज टू बी ऑन द सेम पैनल एज शोभना जी एंड अनुराधा जी एंड ऑल दी अदर इनक्रेडिबल वुमेन वेरी वेरी हैप्पी वुमेन्स डे टू एवरी वुमेन अक्रॉस द ग्लोब आई वुड से हालांकि मुझे लगता है वी डोंट नीड अ पर्टिकुलर डे टू सेलिब्रेट वुमेन्स डे because each day is a women's day and uh, just being a woman is a celebration by itself for me absolutely i'm very proud of i'm very proud of being a woman and like shobhna ji said ki ha main bhi agle janam mein agle janam mohe bitiya hi ki jo so i would also like to be a, a woman in my, in my next birth uh, so uh, journey ki jahan tak baat hai nani uh, wo mujhe lagta hai ki 3 uh, 4 minute mein waqai kehna bahut mushkil hai और गजल से मेरा मैं कब जुड़ी और कैसे जुड़ी गजल से मेरी वाबस्तगी किस तरह हुई मुझे लगता है वो बचपन में कहीं इट्स आई थिंक अ लॉट टू डू विद माय डैड विद माय फादर क्योंकि वो उर्दू पोइट्री के बहुत शौकीन थे और गालिब के और बेगम अख्तर के मुरीद थे तो मेरा ख्याल है कि वो जो इनिशियल uh, आप बचपन में जो चीज आपके कानों में पड़ती है वो आगे चलकर आपके जहन में वो कहीं ना कहीं रह जाती है सो आई थिंक दैट वॉज दैट इज द मेन रीजन फॉर मी टू बी सो मच इन लव विद उर्दू जबान एंड उर्दू पोइट्री और फिर आगे चलकर ऑफकोर्स जगजीत जी प्लेड अ वेरी बिग रोल आई वॉज मैं इतनी मुतासर हुई उनका गाना सुनकर और उनकी गजल सुनकर के कहीं दिल ने ये फैसला किया कि मुझे भी इस विधा के साथ ही जुड़ना है और इसे ही लेकर आगे बढ़ना है लेकिन uh, आप जैसा चाहते हैं और सोचते हैं जिंदगी में कभी कभी ऐसा नहीं होता सो so, मेरे साथ भी कुछ ऐसा ही हुआ आई हैड टू टेक टेन ईयर्स बैटिकल आफ्टर मैरिज um intentional of course not that anybody forced me to do uh, to 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 do that but just that your priorities i think automatically change once you're married and the ones you have children so 10 saal jo the wo pehle wo sirf aur sirf apne ghar ko aur apni bachiyon ko diye then of course there was a wake up call i would say i started learning again from shanti ji i joined her back phir maine jam kar mehnat ki aur bahut shiddat se seekha उर्दू की तालीम ली बायदा तालीम ली आई वॉज ऑलवेज गुड एट उर्दू बिकॉज आई बिलोंग टू जम्मू एंड कश्मीर और यू जस्ट नेचुरली पिक उर्दू देर यू नो यू डोंट हैव टू वर्क वेरी हार्ड फॉर इट ऑनेस्टली लेकिन फिर भी मुझे लगा कि वो काफी नहीं थी मुकम्मल नहीं थी सो मैंने बाकायदा तालीम शुरू की उर्दू की बहुत रियाज किया बहुत मेहनत की क्योंकि गजल इज नॉट ओनली अबाउट सिंगिंग और नॉट ओनली अबाउट प्रोनाउंसिएशन इट्स इट्स मच बियॉन्ड दैट उससे भी कहीं ज्यादा उसके नुआंस एंड पंक्चुएशन बहुत सी चीजें हैं तो एक शायर को पढ़ना पड़ता है समझना पड़ता है उसके ख्याल उसके तस्वुरात को अपने ख्याल बनाना पड़ता है और जिंदगी को थोड़ा जीना पड़ता है तब आप गजल को समझते हैं और फिर हालांकि जिंदगी के दस बारह साल जो बड़े इंपॉर्टेंट थे करियर के मैं कहूंगी जिंदगी के नहीं वो तो निकल गए Uh, but no regrets at all kyunki mujhe lagta hai ki it was very important for me to uh, give that uh, very very um, precious and valuable time to my children i think they needed me the most at that time absolutely everything and, and it shows taste. it shows yeah. their upbringing uh, all thanks to god so बस बहुत अच्छे से मैनेज कर पाई हूँ नन्नी गॉड हैज बीन वेरी काइंड उसके फजलो करम से बहुत अच्छा एक बैलेंस बना के चल पाई हूँ बिटवीन माय पर्सनल एंड प्रोफेशनल लाइफ जो कि मुझे लगता है कि बहुत बड़ी बात है एंड आई एम आई एम 
I'm proud of myself, honestly, that so I've that been able to do that. That's your punchline. <laughs> the balance and, yeah. is the most important thing. And I think yeah. as women, as multitaskers, we have, this is one thing, I don't know, I think it's a natural talent, right? It's a natural talent in most of us. Absolutely. I, I think, yes, all women can do it. But mm. maybe some of them come to some of them. And I have a lot of talented people who have been able to sing a good song or paint something good to do with art. Mm. But they have mm. not been able to do it. But if I can do it, then after 10-12 years, you can do it again and make it your place. So I think it's commendable. So, it is. Apni it is. It's very, very commendable. आपने जो भी बताया इसमें से बहुत पावरफुल मैसेजेस भी मिले हैं हम सबको सो राधिका जी एक छोटी सी बात जो बस और शेयर करना चाहूंगी अपने लिस्नर्स के साथ और अपने व्यूअर्स के साथ कि जो सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज जो मैंने फेस किया नन्नी वो हालांकि मुझे आपने ये क्वेश्चन पूछा नहीं लेकिन मैं खुद ही बताना चाह रही हूँ क्योंकि जिस विधा से मैं जुड़ी हूँ जिस जॉनर से मैं जुड़ी हूँ गजल ये इसमें अदा जो है वो बहुत एक इम्पोर्टेंट हिस्सा है इसका चेहरे पे मुस्कुराहट और अदा बहुत जरूरी है जैसे कथक में है डांस फॉर्म्स में है ऐसे ही गजल में भी है और बीइंग अ वुमन आई थिंक दैट इज द बिगेस्ट चैलेंज यू फेस कि आप जब मर्दों की दुनिया में मर्दों के सामने बैठकर अदा के साथ गाते हैं विद दैट यू हैव टू मेंटेन द द डिग्निटी द ग्रेस एंड रिस्पेक्ट and also to be able to draw a line somewhere hmm. um, most important uh, pata nahi mujhe ye kehna chahiye ya nahi lekin kabhi kabar hame uh, verbally thoda flirtatious bhi hona padta hai nanni stage pe that's that's part of I my think. genre honestly speaking you know hmm. uh, but at the same time wo sab karte hue ek line draw karni hai so that the message is uh, very clear and it's sent across ke बस यही तक है यही तक है नो इट्स वेरी वेरी गुड वॉट यू हैव जस्ट सेड इज एक्सिलेंट एंड वेन डी ब्रिंग यू बैक ऑन स्टेज दैट इज वेन डी गोइंग टू गेट यू टू स्टिंग अ फ्यू लाइन्स फॉर आस इज वेल बिकॉज वी गॉट आर आर नेक्स्ट गेस्ट फॉर टूडे एंड सो थैंक यू सो मच राधिका बट प्लीज डोंट गो वे बिकॉज वी आर नॉट लेटिंग यू लीव विदाउट यू सिंगिंग फॉर आस बहुत शुक्रिया सो थैंक यू एंड सो आर नेक्स्ट गेस्ट फॉर टूडे इज amazing 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 bharatnatyam dancer she is a choreographer professor and like what have you i can't i mean this like so much to her that i cannot say everything in one breath so first good evening and thank you so much shoini for being with us today this is very very special and uh, other than being a really really dear friend she's a fabulous person and shoini i want to hand it over to you quickly and tell us about yourself your journey and how you created this impact Hello, Nandi. Wonderful to be here, and with all these super lady achievers, super women, and Amish ji, of course. Very happy to be with you here today, and a very happy Women's Day, first of all. And every day yes, is no. Women's Day now and forever. Yes. Uh, and yes, Nandi, it's it's always wonderful to kind of go back to where we began our lives as dancers and. as i said i love being a woman and i love being a dancer and uh, for me from day one everything that we did or we thought in art was about kindness it was about empathy it was connecting with the others you know and it was the dream of uh, a world without frontiers without discrimination that was always the kernel of what i did Hmm. my father is the late pandit shubhrata ray choudhury my mother is a sculptor so i grew up in a house of art but also art was taken very seriously because otherwise you know uh, you see especially in bengal uh, it's kind of an obligation to learn a dance or uh, you know some kind of an instrument but i my household uh, they were very clear that you can only learn if you're very serious it's not time pass it's not a hobby 
it's not something that you just display at three year, when you're three years old when there are people at home it is something very serious as serious as your academics so one year i i saw bijju maharaj ji dance when i was i think four years old and i saw yamini krishna murti perform and for me they were gods performing you know and that is exactly what i wanted to learn and when i came and told my parents they said that's all right every child wants to learn dancing but it was after one year of pestering and pursuing it and i wrote down the you know i got somebody to write down the name of guru thankamani kutti and that's when my father took seriously and my journey in dance began under guru thankamani kutti later under guru venkit who was one of the kindest and most wonderful tutors of dance ever i also learned kathakali from guru govindan kutti and karali paittu and mohini attam but i chose to specialize and grow in bharatanatyam uh, and it was later that i got married rather early and had my son then we moved to spain because my husband moved there and at, at that time i was a solo bharatanatyam dancer but when i moved to spain the transition happened between bharat solo bharatanatyam to our shohini moksha dance opera which was born actually out of quite a bit of grief there was this big festival happening and i was asked by the embassy to uh, go and meet the director of the festival and he said that okay so you're going to do indian dance what's bharatanatyam actually is it something like bollywood okay uh, bollywood the heroes take off their shirts and fling it at the audience so would you be able to do that the middle aged men would love it and <laughs> with my bengali sensibilities which which was i was so hurt and annoyed i thought i would probably never dance in this country but within 3 days i was uh, composing a fusion with tchaikovsky and dancing it and then next i had about 8 or 9 students at that time in spain and i was choreographing a piece for them and when we got it ready we i started uh, that was our production for the main events and that is how shohini moksha world dance opera was born Lovely. and we performed with danny boyle for the oscars and it was like so that was the transition and now i perform pure bharatanatyam at all my university gigs but on stage what we do is shohini moksha dance opera which whether whether you find it good bad or ugly it's original it's mine so that's no, what i do no it's fantastic because you took bharatanatyam beyond its barriers you took it on the global stage and like how you know performing at the oscars and so, and so many others in fact and uh, you know how you've developed this group so uh, shohini this has been fantastic because it's so inspirational on how you reached out to so many other women and like you know i mean you told them how what the path was it's very clear it's right in front of them so i think it's a fabulous fabulous journey and i know i'm like pushing and rushing with everyone because we know no, no, don't have worry to, that's all right but uh, we are going to come back because that is when i definitely want to do want you to show a little bit of bhav and a little bit of mudras right so thank you so much shohini and uh, please don't go away because we're going to get you back on stage so thank you so much for being with us and up next we have somebody i've really been exceptionally fond of as a musician as a singer i still love her divane divane to divane hai and lo and behold right here on stage we have with us shweta shetty hi nanni good thank evening nanni it's absolutely how can one refuse you nani one can never refuse you and after listening to all these amazing women i somehow have a common link with all of them most of them seem to have gone abroad taken that 10 year break uh, you know they've had children i haven't but just you know being abroad being away from the limelight being away from music and dance and everything and then eventually coming back to something that you totally totally love which can never leave your your uh, you know your you, you, that you can never leave these uh, things it's just yeah, amazing yeah. with with radhika ji i needed to have a dictionary because her urdu was just so amazing <laughs> no that's it when we spoke about that and we said definitely speak in urdu because i mean after all ghazals cannot be sung in english it does just doesn't work so absolutely absolutely 
So Shweta, tell us about yourself. Like how, like you were such so embedded in the in Bollywood, and then you went off, and then you came back again. So tell us a little bit about your journey, and you know the, your songs, your music, and uh, like then of course, like I mean, uh, I have to share with everybody about your innovation singing opera in Hindi. I mean, nobody has done that till now. So tell us a bit. Take us from there to there. You have literally three minutes, but yeah, take us from there to there. So basically, Nani, uh, you know, uh, when I entered the pop industry, you have to understand the '90s. Uh, I came in the '90s was a very conservative time for a lot of girls my age, uh, and for their sisters and brothers. And uh, it was always like, "Game at pen, oh, mat pen, oh, ghar par ye," but you know. So you see, I, I was also, you know, came from a typical conservative bunk family. So um, I wanted to break these rules, you know, and I, um, so when I did, you know, my, my entry foray into a pop, uh, I always said, I want to be myself. There are many times that I got songs and I'm like, I don't believe in, uh, you know, songs like this. I wanted to wear what I wanted to wear because this is what I wear when I go to college or, you know, things like that. So without realizing it, I didn't realize that I was giving freedom to a lot of other young girls and even boys uh, to basically do what they wanted to do. Um, also to do the music that you love to do. Like even when I entered Bollywood, there was a typical, uh, you know, image of a singer like, you know, saris and churidars and, you know, really? conservative, low voice. Yeah, because Bollywood was more, you know, dominated by Asha Bhosle, Lataji. Due respects, they were like absolutely amazing. But um, uh, I, 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 I couldn't fit into that mold. So when I used to go for a recording, I was in my ganji and my T-shirts, uh, you know, so they, they couldn't. I was in my shorts. They couldn't really understand that. But I just, you know, ba basically kind of told them just because in, I'm in short clothes doesn't mean I'm going to remove it. And to be fair to Bollywood, uh, there was never a, a moment or a, a, op a, 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 a instance where anybody really made a pass at me because I was myself and mm. even singing songs that I wanted to do. So basically my first song was with Papi Da. It was, uh, I don't know if you know about it, Nani, it was called Chicken, You Are My Chicken Fry. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a song sung with Papi Da himself and I was in college and I was totally embarrassed and I tried to get out of the song, you know. Um, I said, Papi Da, I'm Xavier's college, I'm in college and we can't sing like this. Please, take this song from someone else. He said, this song is your song is for you. Anyway, I sang it and it became a hit. Um, you know, so the, the ball just got rolling. So I was unconventional. Uh, my, the, my way of dealing with people was, was also very unconventional. And uh, I also had a lot of uh, restrictions from home, you know, come home at a certain time, don't do this and don't wear that and, you know, reputation to protect because, you know, my mother's side of the family were all, you know, doctors and, uh, you know, father's side of the family. I mean, I was the only bunk girl to actually venture out into something uh, which was actually not a very decent profession. You know, you come home late, uh, you wear the things that you have to do, you are outspoken and you're not allowed to do the thing. Only thing is, oh my God, who's going to marry you? But who the hell wanted to get married <laughs> at point of time? So um, you see, so there was a lot of, um, so while I was listening to all these other women, that they also had to fight their way to find their spotlight, which nobody can take away. So uh, to reach that position, it is a lot of hard work. You have to believe first more than anything else. You have to believe in yourself. I keep telling everybody, you know, uh, you believe in your talent. What others have to say should not affect you. You do what you want to do and, and have the, the integrity and, and uh, you know, do things that are going to be memorable. That even when you're gone, people are going to remember you, which is what, you know, I was very happy that uh, songs like Divane and, uh, you know, uh, Tote Tote during the whole COVID thing came back mm -hmm. into fashion with the younger generation, you know, and I was really excited, you know, 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it, it was nice because... Uh, that's that's what made a fantastic comeback also in many ways, yes? A comeback, mean, sitting at, comeback sitting at home, yeah, I've had many, I've had many comebacks, but this was totally... Um, so you see, you have to leave that body of work that you are going to be proud of. And I, and I was really proud about all these things. Uh, there was a lot of opposition, but you have to fight this opposition. Okay, and uh, even sometimes you feel you're all alone, uh, but the, the tough ones are always alone. You see, when you go to a jungle, you, you will see the weak ones always in groups. Hmm. But if you see a lion or a tiger or a panther or a cheetah, they always hunt alone. And these are the examples that I took when I was entering a world because you're actually entering a jungle uh, as far as entertainment is concerned, because today somebody likes chocolate cake and tomorrow they have, they like vanilla ice cream. <laughs> so you have, you have faith in yourself, have confidence in your talent and just go for it and make your own niche. Absolutely. Yeah. And don't, Love don't it. compromise. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Absolutely. Very well said, Shweta. Very, very powerful words. And I think super powerful messages that have come out of this conversation. And I'm going to now take you backstage, but don't go away because you're definitely not leaving without singing for us. So that's going to be right at the end. <laughs> I love you. So I'm going love to bring you, you back on stage and uh, I'm going to bring our next guest up now. Yeah, thank you, Shweta, for being with us. And But don't go away. So next up is a lady I recently met, recently connected with. And her name is Sangeeta Bahadur. Good evening Hi. and thank you so so much for being with us today. My pleasure entirely, Nani. So before I start, of course, I've written a big intro. I've done that for everybody, but I'm not going to go through that intro because I want you to tell us about yourself. But I definitely want to tell the audience that when I first connected with Sangeeta, she was the ambassador of India in Spain. And then she moved no, to no, Belarus. No, Belarus, Belarus. Sorry, no, no, that's it. Sorry, Malta, Malta, not Spain. You were in Malta Mal that time. I'm in Malta now. I'm High Commissioner to Malta, but before this, I was in Belarus. Was in Belarus. Okay. Yeah. And now she's the high, uh, Indian High Commissioner in Malta. And of course, member of the, uh, I mean, she's uh, from the prestigious IFS and uh, been doing a lot of work with the minister ministry in India as well. And Sangeeta, why am I going on talking about you? I want you to tell us about yourself. And uh, of course, like, uh, and she's an author, which is what really, really was amazing. And so, Sangeeta, tell us a little bit about yourself and then about your books. And I definitely want to hear about uh, Dev Dasi. I'm curious I, to hear about that as well. Well, thank you, Nani. First of all, thank you for having me here in this absolutely stellar lineup uh, of women that you've called uh, today. And I'm so, um, I, I couldn't uh, listen to some of them because I joined late, as you know, because there was all this technical hassle. Mm. But, uh, you know, whoever I've listened to, most of them, half the panel I know personally because of my background in ICCR when I was there. But uh, the other half are equally interesting and amazing because I know about them. And this is such an amazing uh, opportunity to interact with them in some way. So um, I, uh, in fact, I'm I'm very surprised why you called me <laughs> to join this lineup because no, there's, there's a huge connect. No, there's a huge connect because one, if you notice, the common thread right now is that each of the women were rebels in their own way, yes. and that's a huge common thread. That's why you all managed to make the impact and create a niche. So tell us about this. Absolutely. And uh, in fact, I was um, uh, just just uh, listening to uh, Shweta, right? And she was, um, whatever she was saying really rang a bell with me because, um, you know, during my, my misspent youth, I was really the wild child rebel. And uh, coming from a very conventional family, because, uh, you know, like um, everybody was, you know, a lawyer or a doctor or a civil servant and things like that, including my dad, who was in uh, the income tax and a very respectable um, background. And they all wanted me to do certain things, live, live in a certain way. As, as uh, Shweta was saying, you know, you have to come back at a particular time. You have to wear clothes like this. You cannot do this. And, you, you know, you should do this and things like that. So and for me, it was like if my parents asking me to do that, I'm certainly not going to do it. So it was like, you know, so they wanted me to study science. I said, no, certainly not. I'm going to go for literature, which is what I did. Then they wanted me to become a doctor. I said, no, anything but. So, um, you know, it was just a, a series of these rebellions. And then. 
to uh, the most amazing part uh, for me was when um, when I was in my second year of post grad, I declared to my parents that I'm going to become an air hostess. Yeah. So you can imagine the shock and the horror, <laughs> and they were all like, "What's wrong with you?" And there was this major, you know, like kind of um, problem at home, and none of us were talking to each other. And I was like, you know, either I become a journalist or I become a an air hostess, and preferably an air hostess. So everybody was extremely upset and all, but uh, you know, like nobody had the sense to ask me why, which was a duty which was performed by my dad's best friend, who happened to come uh, and visit us in Mumbai. I was uh, studying there in those days. My father was posted there, and he said, you know, like what what is the matter? Why you why are none of you speaking to each other? So my father said, just look at her stupid girl. You know, like second year of post grad and she wants to become an air hostess. So he asked me why, and I said because I want to travel. And he said, "Great, then join the foreign service, travel in style." And I said, "Wow, that's a good idea." So that is how you know this as whole, simple, yeah. as simple as that. And then uh, you know I took the exams and and actually made it to my own amazement and to the amazement of everyone else who knew me. And um, so after that, it's been you know like um, I've, I've never really had a permanent home to call my own because you know since my dad was also in civil services so uh, we were like you know constantly every 2 3 years you change cities and you know like even in india and then once i joined uh, the foreign service then it was a constant change of countries of so i've lived in seven countries i've visited maybe another 45 or whatever i don't really remember the number anymore so um it's been an amazing uh, and a very blessed life, I would say. I mean, very few people get to live a life like this and to, uh, you know, uh, and at the same time to serve your country because I'm all said and done. I'm, as my older daughter says, I'm weirdly patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> for uh, for me, it's like whatever I do, I, you know, I, I feel so blessed and so proud. Um, and uh, you know, I'm a, the my problem, I think, uh, you know, uh, in my in my childhood and youth, was that probably, I mean, don't take it as vanity. I'm just telling you the truth. I had too many talents, so I never focused on any. Like I could sing, mm. I could dance, I could act, I could, you know, do all kinds of things. So everything came so easy that it was like, you know, iska kya value? Ye to, I can just do it like that. Iska kya value? That kind of a thing. Now I kari leti hu. Ye to me to aata hai. So um, now I really regret because my poor parents, they tried very hard to get me trained in music and dance and whatever. And I would flirt with it for a few months and then say, Mutsin Yoga, you know, and I just thought I was such a wonderful singer. I was such a wonderful actress. I didn't really want, uh, you know, anything, which I really regret now. But out of all these things, um, writing is one thing that stuck with me because uh, I started writing when I was maybe around 11 years old with, you know, starting with short stories wow. and things. And, and then it went on to into full-fledged novels written by hand in notebooks. And uh, my all my friends in college and my teachers and everyone were crazy about them. So they'd be waiting for the next chapter, you know, and then it would be torn out of the notebook and circulate and then come back to me. Really? So, That's fantastic. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but then, you know, then I joined the civil services, joined the foreign service, got married, had children. So like a lot of other women who were talking about these things, there was a long break. Um, I, you know, there were years in which I wrote nothing. And then suddenly, like, I said, Kya kar yu apne zindagi ke saath? you know, like, this is fine. I, I enjoy my job, but it doesn't feed your spirit, you know. Government service is not something that gives you that kind of satisfaction that, mm -hmm. say, being a dancer or being a singer or an artist would do. So I said, okay, so now among all my talents, let me see the find the one which really enthuses me the most. And I discovered it was still writing. So that is when, uh, you know, after my second daughter was born, um, I and there was a lot of trouble going on in my life at that time. My first marriage was breaking up and I was like in a very, very bad place emotionally, spiritually. So I took up writing as a therapy. And that is how my first book was born, uh, Jal, which is the first book of the mm. Codrology. So um, it took me years, like it took me about six years to write because I thought, you know, by then I had such a low opinion of myself. I thought nobody would want to read it. 
So I was like, no, you know, what's the point? Let me just write it for my own pleasure. But then, uh, you know, later on, um, after several years, once I had completed it, and by then I was married again. So my husband, uh, he just, you know, glanced through it and he said, this is so beautiful. Why aren't you sending it for publishing? So I said, who would want to publish? And he said, no, you must try. And that was the time when I sent it, you know, for to, a, to an agent and uh, they placed it with the Pan Macmillan uh, in no time and within a... Within wow. A, wow. So, so that, that was the start of that journey. That's of, right. So, uh, yeah. And I've really, really enjoyed both, you know, the streams of my life. I've really loved being in the IFS and I'm enjoying being in North. So there you are. So, and you've been traveling in style. So your air hostess <laughs> ambition also somewhere along the line has gotten fulfilled. But you know what? We have yeah. to have to hear you sing. So don't go away. We're going to bring you back on the stage after completing. We've still got three more fantastic uh, uh, guests right now. And I'm going to bring you back on stage and then we're going to hear you sing. So we know we're not letting Certainly, you go without but that. I'm really a little apprehensive about that with three amazing singers that you have whom I've heard personally and whom I love, all three of them. So, uh, but yeah, okay. That's My okay. Name. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, so thank you so much, Sangeeta. This has been you, amazing. Lindy. And happy Women's and, Day. I forgot to and say. And happy that. Women's Day to you too. Yes. So I'm now going to take you backstage and I'm going to bring on our next guest up for this evening. So our next guest up for this evening is a lady who everybody knew her as the Pari Hume girl. And then, of course, her Kesariya is what I love more than anything else. And just so many more. I don't even want to get started because I know that I end up talking more than y'all talk. So uh, I can go on and on and on talking about Sunita Rao and then leading her right up to, to Vada Karo, what she's just done, which is absolutely a brilliant masterpiece. So Sunita, first, thank you so much and welcome today to this uh, very special session of Women with Wings. And tell us a little bit about what was it that got you started into singing, got you on the stage? What was that zing passion and how you took it on? What were the challenges? First of all, let me just give you a very, very big kiss because it's wonderful, wonderful to see you, Nani, and wonderful to have all these absolutely incredibly accomplished, beautiful, beautiful women on this platform. It's really, truly an honor to be here. Um, me, I, I have been in the pop industry for um, three decades, I think, um, thrown into the world uh, of the entertainment and, um, and uh, musical theater at the age of uh, 15. And uh, yeah, that's a very, very young age. I was doing my HSC examination and Greece at the same time. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Uh, I remember one, on one, one, one particular occasion, I had my uh, Hindi exam in the morning and in the evening I had a show of Greece. So um, I'll never forget how a friend of mine drove me at full speed from the examination center straight to Safaya Baba Auditorium. I'll never forget that. Um, but you know something, if I want to speak about a journey and if I want to put it into like a, a short capsule, um, I would say it has it has been one of the most exciting uh, and difficult um, and um, what shall I say, um, magical journey uh, as far as my uh, entertainment and theater and music career is concerned. But in the beginning, it was very, very difficult, very, very emotionally difficult for me because uh, being at such a young age, everybody was much older than me. And uh, I remember my, my very first theater experience, I'm not going to say any names over here, but it was a gentleman whom, whom I, was, I was working with um, who didn't tell me what I was actually going to eventually do. He made it sound like I was going to be doing this heavy duty theater thing and you know I had to do warm-ups with him physical warm-ups and stretching and I was a dancer and I thought hey I'm going to be something doing something really cool and all I really ended up doing was wearing this uh, pink leotard and moving around the boxes and I was actually changing the set for the rest of the skits to happen but I'll never forget the review that came in the newspapers was the play got a bad review but I got a good review. Pencil Slim Sunita Rao dancing lively on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. 
So that was That's a very so difficult funny. beginning. Yeah. And then it was basically during musical theater that uh, HMV uh, spotted me and asked me to do albums. And then again, I had my nose up in the air. I was in, in Xavier's college. I was learning Carnatic music. I took myself very seriously. I said, I'm not going to do Hindi pop. But I had a whole textbook, like a whole book of, of loose pages where I had written um, uh, English songs, English lyrics, but I refused to do Hindi. So they said, okay, we'll give you a couple of years to grow up. You're going to come back to us. And sure enough, I mean, my mother is a Ghazal singer and I've yeah. been exposed to Indian classical music. But I've been exposed to, um, exposed to from uh, Kishore Kumar, Kishor Kumarji, Asha Bosle, Lata Ji and everybody. And then on the other hand, Billy Joel, Whitney Houston, Peter Gabriel. You know, I'm born in Germany and, and grown up in Mumbai. So I'm like a kind of a global person, you would say, right from the beginning. Mm. So mm. I, and I had so many interests as Sangeeta said just now I wanted to sing I wanted to dance I wanted to act I wanted to do economics for God's sake I applied to do economics abroad and I can't even remember the chronology I was also applying for musical theater abroad I don't know what came first so you know it was um, in like in, in school I did this thing called the aptitude test where it actually said interests unclear and that really affected me it's like I wanted to do so much I wasn't unclear in my head. I was very clear that I wanted to do a lot of things. But then fortunately for me, things just unfolded. You know, I was learning Bharatanatyam as a child and I'm, I've got, I've got, you know, I've listened to the most incredible Bharatanatyam dancer on this platform today and my pranam to you. I learned it as a kid and my attempts to do my Aranketram, Aranketram were thwarted on three different occasions for various reasons in my life. But then that was the reason why I joined the musical theater. And that's where I got uh, introduced to uh, Evita and Greece. So like one thing leads to another. And I had several issues. I mean, in those days we had uh, playback singing offers. I worked with everybody from Bapida to Anu Malik to Rajesh Roshan to Lakshmi Khan Parilal. Everybody gave me something or the other to do. But you know, um, just as Shweta said earlier, they were trying to make me fit into a certain mold. Mm -hmm. And the things that they thought suited me I wasn't really so happy doing, you know, like a lot of English words mixed with Hindi and, you know, that kind of thing. And some of the songs were nice, but a lot of them, a lot of them were forgettable. So I found my own identity doing my own music. And um, fortunately, I had friends in the jingle industry. I was known as the kind of jingle queen and I was doing like hundreds and hundreds of jingles. And I knew Louis and Leslie and everybody. And they ended up producing my albums. I was so lucky. I had to, of course, chase them. I mean, Ranjit, you know, I had to chase them for months and months and months and months, but I got albums out of them. I had to fight with HMV because they were refusing to spend a more than a certain amount on videos. They did give me, in those days, it was incredible that we actually had pop videos, music videos. Hmm. But you know, when I made the video of Pari Hume, by then they had said they, they, they didn't want to spend any more. And I myself somehow begged and borrowed and, and got some money together, made the video and put the video cassette into an envelope and sent it off to Singapore to MTV myself. I got fired by the record company and they said, how could you go over our heads and do it? I said, well, you weren't doing it. So I had to. These were Sorry. difficult. I was like, I was young and my, I would get butterflies in my stomach when I would go into that office with them sitting on those big desks. You know, and sometimes they, the industry had this attitude, aap to pop shows karte hain. like, you know, you have a playback and all movies and all you, you won't be able to do that kind of attitude, you know, at that time. But I had, I had my niche, I had a few playback songs up my sleeve. But I remember after having worked with very big names, you know, people like A.R. Rahman, Anu Malik, when they asked me to come back for a recording, I would be somewhere in Sharjah doing a show for all the cricket teams with my whole entourage. I was doing my thing. And because I couldn't make it, you know, for a particular recording, maybe then that was it. I was out of the queue. So no, it's but that's like true. So the most important thing that you've just shared right now, the most important message is that stand up for yourself. And that's yes. the only way to do it. Yeah. And, and you do what's most compelling for you at the yeah. time. Sometimes I used to wonder, you know, am I really, are my aptitudes really unclear? But then I, and I took myself so seriously. Some people said that my music was way ahead of its time, sometime in a good way and sometime in a not so good way. Like I was rejected mm -hmm. my music videos. I appro approached certain people to make certain music videos for me. They didn't want to make them. They thought music was too sophisticated <laughs> for that time. But I continued in that vein and then Pari Hume happened. Because that was my sentimentality, exposed to classical music, but being a pop, uh, a singer. So what I'm saying is, see, everything, whether it was dance, writing, acting, writing, motherhood, everything had its time. 
and they were all different expressions of my love for life and you basically. and you got to push you got to push your own way out there's no other way out nobody was going to yeah. do that for you you have to do it yourself thank you yeah. sunita thank this you. was fantastic you know i've got goosebumps listening to your journey <laughs> honestly speaking it's absolutely brilliant and what but if you can i know that you also have to rush away somewhere but if you can stay back because i'm definitely not letting you go without listening to two lines of kesariya but i'm going to bring you back bring you back okay. uh, after we're done with uh, gitika and garima because right. i'm waiting okay. to bring gitika up on stage next so thank you I'd so much gitika i'd love to listen to them yes thank excellent. you excellent thank you so thank much thank you for having me thank you thanks <laughs> So up next we have another phenomenal phenomenal person hi gitika good evening and thank you so much hi nani thank you for having me here thank you so much <laughs> thank you for your patience i know that you know we are like way way delayed but then you know how it is i'm trying to get everybody's years of journey into just 3 minutes it's like such a time that's okay that's okay you forget i'm a i'm a live event host so i'm very used to people speaking and waiting for my turn <laughs> <laughs> that's also true so with you at least i don't have to feel that guilty but however no. having said that but i definitely want to tell the people the tell our audience that uh, you know other than uh, gitka wears many many hats and uh, other than her of course live host hat she set up a totally new trend in live hosting and other than that she also is the founder of ministry of talk where she has shown the importance of communication but you know again like i'm going to just shut up and i'm going to hand it over to gitika because gitika i just want to definitely say one thing to you which i i think i've said that to you but if i haven't i want to say it just now that every bit of you amazes me every single time you come up with such phenomenal stuff and i'm not saying this because you're sitting in front of me but you do i mean you're just amazing so over to you gitika tell us about your life your journey how did you take to live hosting so we've literally time starts now let's go for it and <laughs> uh, i i uh, really i mean i'm i'm honestly saying this i i don't really like talking about uh, my journey i just think that you know however a careful one is uh, one may end up uh, sounding uh, uh, i don't know bombers so i would have preferred if you had just asked me a few questions but um since this uh, debate really has a, a, a this is this discussion really has a purpose and the purpose is to inspire uh, other women out there i'll try and quickly so the first uh, 10 years of my journey were in delhi where i was a television host and uh, i did um, i hosted many shows on television and i was also uh, a live host so i used to do a lot of work as uh, a live host and then uh, in 2008 and uh, 9 i uh, decided to settle down in paris and i had my daughter in 2010 and when i had left um, you know i was doing very well uh, by by all standards and when i came back i thought that would just sort of seamlessly uh, continue and why would would it not i had uh, put on some weight and uh, i had lost uh, touch with the trends uh, of uh, my category uh, i had lost touch with lots of the people who were you know, in the industry uh, i knew nothing about social media and but i just i i never really uh, thought that i would be so uh, uh bluntly rejected by the entire industry when i come back and i had left uh, when i had left i was i was literally doing 20 shows a month <laughs> i had a host in a day on sabras i was it was just a hard come point i was doing a, a travel show on the sea so i did a lot of very good work uh suddenly yeah, i was back after two years of my Uh, I remember not a single call would be replied to. Gitika, one sec. There's something with the sound. Your voice is coming and going. Or oh, just come closer to the. <coughs> okay, so I think Gitika has got dropped off. <coughs> so we'll probably bring her back. Sorry, I'm so sorry. So uh, where did you uh, where did I stop being audible? <coughs> Sorry, <coughs> you carry on doesn't matter. Okay, so uh, yeah, and then I I began to realize that okay, but do, you know yes your uh, ecosystem ki agar koi um, uh, in particular uh, 
कन्वेंशन है उसको देखने से पहले हम पहले अपने आप को देख लेते हैं कि हमारे में इस वक्त क्या क्या कमी है सो आई वेन बैक आई ब्रश अप माई एक्सक्यूज सोशल मीडिया आई ब्रश अप माई मार्केटिंग स्किल्स आई वी कनेक्टेड विद द इंडस्ट्री बाई आर लॉर्ड इंडस्ट्री प्लेटफॉर्म परफॉर्मिंग ऑन दो बट देर अगेन स्टिल इट वॉज इट वॉज ह्यूजली अप हिल क्लाइम and then i slowly but surely began to realize because i i was told on my face by some very very uh, successful people that uh, it's not going to happen you are now married you have a child you have weight you know you have put a weight on you and um, you anyway are not someone who really networks a lot and you're not uh, you know you don't go out there meet people you only do your work and you go back home and up to you ega what is the problem why you why do you want to work as well as not earning a what you know, there's a shelf life for उस and i began to realize that like me many women across different streams in india were fighting the same uh, battle i could have really done it walk away i had nothing really to do but uh, and this may sound really uh, unbelievable but i actually dug my heels in and i said that this is this is not correct <laughs> and not for any other reason but for the sheer reason that uh, i i always believe that we can change the world through the life that we live. But for that yeah. one reason, let me go out there and just prove this point to all of these people who think that you know you can tell a woman when her career is over just because you want to see a certain kind of uh, artist on stage. And I I really really took it upon myself. And um, I remember I worked um, harder than I think a human being can. I had a child, I was bringing her up. I had a home. Um, I worked very, very hard. Uh, I've always said that you know, may, men really uh, don't do the world. It's their ego that loses the world. So I had to uh, to change the system. You have to be a part of the system. So I think somewhere I knew how to be a part of that system through uh, just the way I was as a person. But I was also once into the system, I was I was also extremely assertive about uh, what my values were. how i would work what i would do and i would not do and slowly 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 because um things started to change and uh, i started getting uh, you know very good opportunities on life stage i chose not to do it really because of my daughter being young and uh, i started getting awarded left right and center people realized the importance of uh, so the recognition you know, the recognition and acknowledgement because of your persistence but gitika i read somewhere that you did not want to be an anchor So what was it that yes. you wanted to be? I was I I actually did my business management in Delhi University. My dad taught me oh. to do that. But then I went into transform from Jamia, uh, okay. where in my final film I was the camera person. So I was headed to be the camera person, probably in <laughs> TV or you know those those days in TV was uh, where all of us wanted to go. And someone saw me in the studio. We had big studios in the Jamia Media Mascom campus, and someone saw me and offered me my first role in Anchor. And then I don't know how I got my first show as a live host, and I got paid some insane amount of money back then. So, <laughs> so that is that was, was it. I mean, I got the wrong reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's fine. I mean, see, everything has a reason, and everything has a path, and it gets charted on its own. So, listen, this has been very, very yeah, good and very, very informative. And uh, I'm sorry I put you on the spot because I wanted you to speak about yourself because you never end up doing that. So at least, and your journey is so fantastic on how you stood against all odds, how you made your niche, and how you stayed just to cans, just to cut into that, uh, you know, ridiculous belief. So which is you got to you got to believe in yourself. I think bottom line is that, right? Isn't it, Kritika? Believe in yourself more than that. I think if you if your uh, journey is genuinely and uh, truly about changing something in the world, because we are heading into. a great transformation by 2032 our world will be a different place so True. i believe that if your karma is helping change the world and helping it transform into a better world then the universe will will march with you and help you automatically absolutely this was super powerful 
So uh, thank you so much, Gitika. I'm going to take you backstage, and I'm going to now bring Garima back on. And uh, so, uh, but don't go away because at the end you will get no, no, a very powerful no. message. Yes. Yeah, so thank you so much, Gitika. Thanks, Adan. Thank you. And up next, I have another amazing, amazing, amazing person. Good evening, and thank you so much, Garima. Hi, Nani. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me over, and happy Women's Day. And happy Women's Day, and to you too. <laughs> and uh, my apologies for the delay. I know that you know when we spoke in earlier, we said seven thirty-five, seven forty will be your chance, but no chance. I mean, you know, there's just so much. But, I'm sure uh, we, every all of these incredible women we have, the, uh, they had so much to tell about their lives, and it's it's. Very difficult to you know cut it down and bring it down to three minutes or four minutes. I'm it's, so yeah, I could have easily done a nine hours show today, but you know the only thing was that it's, I was feeling guilty coming into everybody's way to say okay, fine, like let's let's close this and move on. But seriously, I, I mean I can hear you all forever. I mean you are such an inspiration, and Garima, I'm not reading your profile because I want you to tell us about you being the first. a professional driver with mercedes and a woman car rally driver with the mahindra right so yes with mahindra i i did regulatory uh, tsd rally with them uh, and then i went on doing uh, extreme rallying later yes and then you you got loads of awards for motorsport but tell us about yourself and how you got into uh, rallying and how you went into this entire profession uh you know nani back then when my dad uh, taught me driving when i was just a little girl you know both he and i we never imagined in our wildest dreams that there could even be a remotest possibility of me getting into motor sports you know and, and on top of uh, that making a career out of it was like completely out of question so but you know talking about uh, you know my life uh, i'll start with you know um i'll give a very in a brief this thing i would like to say is that early on i faced uh, huge uh, personal challenges uh, i come from an um, old old orthodox family of bareilly i was married when i was just 18 years old i want to study further i want to make a name for myself but i had no say uh, uh, unfortunately it turned out to be a bad marriage um, and if i had stayed on i would have lost all my self respect so i i it was a tough decision for me to uh, you know um, walk out of the marriage because my my uh, pillar of strength my father at that time had passed away I had no professional degree because i got married when i was just 18 uh, you know i finished my education after my ma marriage i had no financial independence and on top of that i had a young daughter so you know the present and the future it seemed like a you know complete nightmare but you know i decided to take charge of my life and i decided to go out of the marriage so that was my first difficult decision that i had taken and after after my divorce um, you know i had this strong feeling that i had no identity left i felt completely useless with no significant role to play in the society and then i took a you know full time corporate job i had never ever done a job earlier you know i belong to a, a business class family uh, but i'm a completely self made person and i you know, so gradually i got financial stability in the job this was the time when i first uh was i was introduced uh, to this uh, women's car rally i went for my first rally when i was around 30 years old at that time you know i just went wow. for fun without knowing that it it would eventually become my calling and career um uh, and and when you are over 30 you know you're planning your retirement in any sport you know today's champions if you see they start the early on you know much before their teens and by the time you know they turn 30 they have done and seen it all and here i was i had decided uh, you know that i will take up motor sports as a career so late in life and uh, at that time i remember my family and friends uh, they advised me against it because you know motor sport is a risky sport it's a tough one and i was neither trained i was not not physically tough and above all i was on the wrong you know side of the age curve uh, besides that you know motor sports um, was dominated by men and it required not just physical and mental strength but also a, a, a solid financial support so um, it was a completely uncharted territory for me I and mean, i didn't know what my future is going to be like but i was also very determined you know i um, uh, you know since then the journey may have been grueling but you know i There, there has been no looking back, and 
uh, I was very lucky because I was picked up by this highly coveted, uh, you know, team Mahindra, and I won lots of awards and accolades. And wow. you know, I made it myself in the motorsport field. Um, then I took further training and I got into extreme rallying. So extreme rallying is the the the, the fast paced one, you know, where the which is the real stuff, you know, where the uh, the the guts and the skills of the you know uh, rally driver are truly tested. So we drive on all kinds of uh, terrains. Uh, initially wow. yeah so you know uh, to tell a little bit more about how it all went and then maybe I'll, i can tell about my motorsport journey a little more but you know these um, rallies i remember would happen mostly during the weekends and holidays because i was in a full-time job um and then i felt that there was a huge potential for me to excel in the field of motorsports uh, i was you know after uh, I, I worked for like almost nine years in the job and then there came a point in my life where again i had to take a very tough decision um, of quitting my job uh, to, to get full time into the sports uh, and you know opportunities related to cars Bec uh, because I, I you know because i felt that there is a future but definitely there was no guarantee of success and again it was uh, an uncertain future so this was another tough decision which i took of quitting my you know stable job where i was getting a you know fixed monthly income and getting into something which had no i had no i didn't know what's going to happen whether it's you know i'll be successful in this or not but today when i look back i realize that i have a huge appetite to take risks uh you know uh, however i feel that had i not made those you know tough and challenging decisions at that point you know in time yeah. um you know, I would not have achieved or reached where I am today. Uh, currently, no, it's fantastic. You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know, currently I'm working as a freelance automotive journalist and I'm, I'm an, a social media influencer. Uh, you know, it was always in my dream, you know, I would always imagine all these supercars, luxury cars, sports cars would come to my place and, you know, I would, you know, uh, you know, create content around them. So these, this is actually happening you know, uh, today, uh, these cars, they come to my, they, they, they stay at my place for a few days and I create, I drive around these cars and, you know, create around, uh, content around these cars. I've always, I, I've also been organizing a lot of rallies and self-drive uh, expeditions, uh, Nani. You know, but the, the, पहले मतलब मैं रैलीज में खुद पार्टिसिपेट करती थी और अपॉर्चुनिटीज ढूंढती थी और अब मैं रैलीज अपॉर्चुनिटीज बना रहे हो और लोगों के लिए अपॉर्चुनिटीज क्रिएट कर रही हूं एक्चुअली सो यू नो इट्स फैंटास्टिक एब्सोल्युटली इट्स फैंटास्टिक गरिमा सीरियसली हैट्स ऑफ टू यू बिकॉज़ यू नो देयर वेरी फ्यू पीपल हु आर एबल टू टेक दिस थिंग फॉरवर्ड द वे यू हैव एंड लाइक आई सेड यू नो टुडेस वन कॉमन थ्रेड व्हिच इज देयर बिटवीन ऑल आवर achievers today is that one that you had confidence in your talent two that you stood for what you wanted to do and three there was one rebel spirit inside everyone so this is wonderful and garima a little birdie told me that you also sing so now we are going to bring everybody back on and now since our formal round of one by one by one is over so now we are going to have this one little little just small small piece because now i think time is in our hands right so we can quickly we've got i think maximum another 6 minutes and we must wind up so thank you so much this has been extremely so positive but stay here and i'll bring everybody else to join us up on stage sure so sure. uh it's a surprise oh anuradha sorry cannot come up so she will have to probably be in uh gitika is uh, video is off uh shweta is right here with us sangeeta is here with us radhika is here with us sunita is here and shohini is here and then we have shobhna didi with us wait let me see if uh so i don't know if nena if you can hear me if you can ask gitika if she can have her camera on please then i can bring her up on stage so uh ladies i have to say thank you so much it's been like it's been amazing for me i don't know about the audience but it's been absolutely amazing and i always actually given the goosebumps today and i have to be very honest you guys are <coughs> exceptional you all are exceptional so uh now thank we just you. we thank you thank you so much you guys are thank amazing you.
I mean, the stories that I've listened today, I mean, you know, you are such an inspiration, all of you. And you know, and listening, like listening to you actually speak about it yourself makes such a huge difference. Yes. Absolutely. All of you. All of you. Really all amazing. You. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, all the ladies, all you once guys. again, all congratulations guys. to all of you. Uh, and I've got, I've, finally, I've got Kitika here. Let me try and get her up as well on stage. Kitika, you had vanished. You turned off your camera, but we have you back on. So uh, now, before we uh, close the session, um, I know that each of you are amazingly talented, and that's one thread that jo jo uh, joins us all. So either poetry or little Ada or little Bhav or two lines of your favorite song or allow me, I can give my choices as well. So let's start with you. Let's start with you, Garima. Two lines of any of your favorite oh songs, and then let's Garima, that you can sing is an amazing <laughs> thing. I'm, I'm a huge <laughs> fan of yours. You, you drive the Mercedes. Garima, you drive the Mercedes. I come from Germany. Sunita and I lived. We we lived in Germany for so long. And so it comes as a huge surprise if you sing. You no, no, no. Yeah, Sunita, exactly. I'm So Garima, anything that's your favorite, and don't worry, everybody's the same here. So anything that's your favorite, okay. go for it. Okay, quickly, I, I must sing then. Okay, oh shit, I wasn't thinking this is gonna happen, but uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Lord, This was beautiful, absolutely beautiful, Garima. And you were honestly saying this. So, next time when you're driving the Mercedes, we know what you're singing. So, uh, Shweta, you're next. Well, I, I, I did the Gayatri Mantra. I don't know if you guys have been following me, but uh, I, think, I did I just check your uh, the sound thing is uh -huh. okay now it's stopped okay i did a padhyatra recently uh, in the jungles with uh, all the wild animals and i'm like god i have seen human beings it can't be worse than those wild animals so and it was a really um a really uh, it would have been wonderful to have a big company like, uh, you know, Sony or T-Series promote that. But today we have so many channels that you can release it. And I did this Gayatri Mantra and um, I had written a few lines because I just feel that we women are much stronger than we think we are. And although we have situations that go against us, uh, you have to fight it. You have to, at the end of the day, truth always will find the light. So when I was going through the worst phase of my life, when I had uh, certain accusations against me, uh, which was not even 1% true, I wrote these lyrics. And it goes like, God has given me a voice to choose my words, to empower, not to be silenced, but to be heard, to change my today for." Uh, you know, 
Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. So unusual, but so, so powerful. Thank you. Very, very nice. Thank so you. Sangeeta, over to you. Oh. So, <laughs> after, after, straight after Shweta, that's like no, quite a No, no. Please, Sangeeta. <laughs> That was so beautiful. I'm dying to hear you sing. That was very nice. I mean, I was going to coax her to do my Divane Divane, but after what she sang, I think that surpasses yeah. it's, everything. It's Women's Day. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was brilliant. So, Sangeeta, over to you. Suraj se pehle jagayenge aur akhbar ki सब सुर्खियां हम गुनगुनाएंगे पेश करेंगे गर्म चाय फिर कोई खबर ना आई जो पसंद बदल दे जब Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> so good. Gosh, what are right. you doing? Amazing, amazing. You're amazing, Love absolutely. You. Amazing. So over to Radhika. Ooh. Radhika ji, really looking forward. After yes, a long time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward. I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm going to go. It's a very, very popular song. It's a Oh, really? Okay, yeah. gee. Yeah. Yeah. Didi didi okay, okay. This was okay. very, very Thank nice. This is beautiful. Absolutely Lovely. beautiful. Thank really. you. Fabulous. Radhika, so good. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, Radhika ji. Really, that was beautiful. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, amazing. So, amazing, so you, Radhika ji. Thank you. Thanks. So I'm awesome. going to think something which um, not many people have heard. Um, there are so many aspects to women okay so i'm going to sing two little things one is something that i wrote in uh, an album called talash where the woman is looking at herself in the mirror and she sings she she me maine apna husn o shabab dekha sharm o khaya ka pehla maine sehlab dekha saanso mein hal chal hai बैठी बैठी मैं खुद से बातें हजार करूं जागी उमंग ऐसे खुद से मैं प्यार करूं सांसों में हल चल है मैं जानूं कैसा होगा वो दिल मर मैं जानूं ना होगा वो जाने कहाँ 
So that's that's the coquettish part of the woman where she's admiring herself, loving herself, thinking of her lover. And then I wrote something for Ladli, the Girl Child Initiative, where I was appealing to women not to take any nonsense. And I said, सुन लो दिल की जुबां खुद को ना दे सजा ये तो हक है तेरा बात ये ना भुला ना वो दिन रहा ना वो रात भूल जा भूल जा भूल जा don't push me don't force me don't hurt me don't when you know things are getting real rough you got to be tough enough very very powerful now over to shoini shoini it's all yours i'll do a devi speaks which is uh, dedicated to all of you ladies here empowered ladies ladies of strength and ladies who change the world ya ya devi devi sarvabhute gopal shakti rupena sansthita namastassai 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 namo namo ya devi सर्वूतेषु शाति संस्थिता नमस्त स्वै नमस्त स्वै नमस्त स्वै नमो नम या देवी सर्वूतेषु मातृपेण संस्थिता नमस्त स्वै नमस्त स्वै नमस्त स्वै नमो नम दट्स इट Beautiful. Wow. Rani, I'm going to have to leave, okay? I have to yes, leave. Yes. Thank you so yes, much. Yes, yes. I'm Another aware. Thank you so show. much that you were thank there you. for so long. This is absolute pleasure. Yes, so sure. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sunita. Bye, Sunita. Bye. 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 And uh, so now we've got Shobhna Didi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is some signal. Somebody is coming. Okay, the guitar is quickly coming to you. Would you like to leave that one? Uh, I mean, we are open to hear you sing. We are open to hear you perform. We are open to hear the guitar. Guitar can't talk to you. Open to hear you sing. Open to hear you perform. Open to hear you give one powerful line that you'd like to leave. Uh, leave a message behind. So oh, I'll pick it because I know you're running out of time. But there's this very uh, favorite poem, a poem of mine, which I, in the years ahead, hope to use when I travel across the country. Gitika, there's a sound problem. Can't hear you. There's an issue. Your voice is cutting and going. We, uh, we just heard coming. a poem. Okay. Yeah, but it's just coming and going. There is an issue. Oh, a pity. Can't hear you at all now. Can't hear you at all. Is is it my signal or nobody can hear her? No, no I can't. can't hear you. I, I can't hear you. Oh no! Oh no! So then now you have to share the poem with us, which we're going to put out later. Then, so Shobhna Didi. Back no, over to you, and I will. <laughs> okay, then I'll say it. Uh, a poem that I had written way back. When I started working on social issues, I'm talking about way back in on environment in 1980-82. So it was on Kaliya Dama, and it said, "Kaha chupe tum, kaha ho Krishna? Kaha chupe tum, kaha ho Krishna? Kaha ho tum, kaha ho Krishna? Dwapar ke Kaliya ko nathne wale, logon ka udhar karne wale." मन चेतन जागृत करने वाले आज कहा हो तुम कहा रो रही गंगा माता रो रही यमुना रो रहा प्रदूषित आंचल तेरे पुत्र पुत्रियों द्वारा हृदय न पिघले 
आंसू देखकर प्रलय तांडव में भी घिरकर कब जागेगी चेतना उनकी कब जागेगी कहा हो कृष्ण कहा हो तुम कहा हो मुझको भी तो जीने दो मीठा कड़वा जैसा भी दो जीवन रस तो पीने दो माँ मुझको भी तो जीने दो माँ मुझको भी तो जीने दो Beautiful, beautiful. My God, it touches the heart. Yeah. It touches the heart, Didi. That is beautiful. Gitika, is are you in a position to pick this up on, or I don't know what the signal is like. Can't hear you at all. At all. Ah, oh, what a pick! What a pick! What a pick! Okay, so I think then we have to be sure now. We are already like one hour over time. But of course, when you have nine phenomenal ladies speaking, there is no way that I can try. I could never have done it within forty-five uh, minutes. I don't even know what I'm just thinking of. I thought as much. Yeah, but but really, honestly speaking, thank you to each and every person who was part of today's show because you made this so special. And I think this Women's Day will always be remembered, especially because of the inspirational stories. the powerful messages that you've left behind your journeys are so inspirational and how you have gone have gone beyond all odds you like the cliche broken the glass ceiling but you guys really have so whether the common streak over here was being a rebel standing up for yourself but you had confidence in yourself and you were dedicated you were sincere towards what you wanted to do and i think if that is there nothing can hold you back so that's a message not just for women not just for girls but the message for everyone i think in life really more than anything else so yes happy women's day thank you very much Three cheers for all the blood <laughs> sheep in the family <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely so before we end we have a beautiful video of the nehru center again which we're going to show and thereafter thank you so much everyone take care of yourself and good night and thank you for being with us Good night. Very happy. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Nani. Thank, thank you. Thank you, and good night. All the best. All, all the lovely ladies. Pleasure meeting each one of you. All and great to too. see you again, Sangeeta. Sangeeta and I were classmates. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, Madhika ji and I we keep really? meeting. You know, <laughs> we are. Dukha ji, in the morning I was there at the same place where you were. for the prize distribution okay <laughs> i miss i miss saying hello to you though <laughs> so let's do this let's show the av let's go offline and then we can keep talking here yeah so let's do this let's show the let's show the closure okay. av for the show all right So big thank you to Nehru Center London for this collaboration, and we're extremely grateful for this. And thank you each and every person for being with us today, all our nine guests, and every single person who was part of the show, the team behind that was Nena and Rajshri and Noor who's putting the story together. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Thank you, Nani. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.